complex data, including uh, symbolic data analysis, uh, which could have uh, its own session, but well, um, this session will include three talks, and then the last one will be postponed on this afternoon, at the beginning of the afternoon, because uh, uh, the last speaker of this afternoon session, this many uh, couldn't uh, come to find, so it's cancelled. So we are happy having in such a way we, 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 uh, we have some time and we will be okay with the time schedule. So now we will listen to uh, Mr. Carlo Prado uh, from the Naples University Federico II uh, on decomposition of high frequency data in components, visualization and interpretative models. Yes, my French is terrible. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I studied at the school, but uh, anyway. Thank you uh, very much for the invitation, and uh, um, thank you to Professor Laura and to Manashevi that are together with me in uh, some of this work, and Carlo Conte that uh, has hosted me for uh, making a part of this work. So, uh, this work is on high frequency data and the composition of high frequency data in components. Um, in, this is my outline of my speech. Uh, in particular, I speak about uh, beam token series this approach uh, related to small data analysis, uh, visualization, modeling, and forecasting and clustering. This is uh, the outline of my speech. Okay. Uh, so, what is uh, the problem? The problem is uh, uh, high frequency data. In fact, uh, typically uh, classical time series are equal space sequences of scalar data and frequency, high frequency data are typically not. In fact, uh, they are typically unequal space sequences of scalar data and typically they arrive at random time. This is the problem. Uh, and in financial markets and in finance, this type of uh, series are very common and many types of financial data are obtained in, in this way. Uh, are, there are a lot of different uh, names as intro day data, tick by tick data, and so on. This is the case of tick by tick frequency. Okay? Uh, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, financial out output related to traditional page of Reuters in which we have each transa uh, every transaction related to uh, each uh, tick uh, in, in the intermarket. Okay. They have a lot of uh, the important and relevant statistical characteristics because uh, this type of transaction by transaction data are typically, uh, I, I, I told that in regular space and series, and they, at the end, are characterized by a random dynamic of, of, of observation. Okay, so, uh, in particular, this type uh, of data are, uh, this type of data are relevant also because they have interweeks and intraday patterns in market activity. Uh, this is a, a, an interesting point because financial data are usually unpredictable and in this case we, we can find some interesting patterns that can be used in trading operations. The important point is that uh, this type of data, by its nature, uh, irregular, uh, that, that's not good for uh, using normal and classical statistical techniques and uh, uh, normal techniques, like geometrical techniques. So, it is important to find some new different approaches in that case. Typical, this, this type of data are overwhelming, and typical, these data are, are needed to be cleaned and correct. The most important point, and there is a need of aggregation, because these data are too many to be handled well. Okay. In, but the point is that there is an information loss after the aggregation. Clearly, we lose a lot of, of different information. Uh, the approach, uh, uh, in, to, there are various approaches in literature from the initial work of uh, Bilal and Lide, um, the data analysis approach. Various approaches are coming from uh, symbolic data analysis. In particular, the uh, last literature approach of histogram time series by Arroyo Almaté and uh, the interval time series by Carvalho that they use some type of histogram time series to take into account this type of data. Okay, this is my approach. My approach is related to people time series. It's a new, new type of symbolic data 
in which we can take a disadvantage of using the beam plot as or a kernel density estimator, visualize it in two different sides. So we have here a kernel density estimator and here another one in which we improve the visualization by considering both. Uh, but the important point is that by using the properties of this type of method, we can to, uh, obtain an exploratory point of view of what is this, what is this the um, intra intraday dynamics or intra period dynamics. Clearly, it's possible to use uh, this, this, this type of data in other, in other type of context because uh, it is uh, uh, possible to generalize this, this problem for the field where we have a lot of data. In any case, the characteristics uh, by comparing the characteristics of the multiple time series with other types of time series, and uh, we collect all the information we can have in other types of symbolic time series, for example, the characteristics of the location of the size and shape, but at the same time, characteristics from the time series, the relevant time series of uh, um, classical time series. In fact, the location represents the beam line mean or the beam plot center, the size is representing the beam plot radius, lower and upper bands, and in particular, the size is very relevant because in finance, or in financial economics, it will be considered as a measure of volatility of our data. So it will be an, a, an interesting measure. The shape is a, a new uh, thing because uh, it is represented by the density trace. Uh, it's very important because they can to give us the structure, the real structure of our data. Without any restriction, we can to have the real structure of the our intraday variability. So uh, this is the um, irrelevant measure that could be uh, allowed to compare the beam plot uh, over time. This is the beam plot time, a beam plot time series applied to uh, a real data set, so the Dow Jones daily data, in which we consider this type of data to align the financial price. It is interesting to know that we have both the intra-parallel intra variability, uh, sorry, inter-parallel uh, inter 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 variability, so this is the content of the entire time series over time, but at the same time the intra-day variability that is representing the actual content of information of each day of trading. So, the, each bank of this uh, is representing typically uh, a precise structural change. So, by considering the structure of each beam plot, we can have uh, useful uh, ideas for trading or for what is the, the structure of our initial data. It's important to, to, to tell that uh, usually this type of data by using classical time series are not visible at all because they are overwhelming and so we, do, we don't see the, the exact structure and in that way we can detect some the relevant information of the original time series as the brand, the typicality, the uh, seasonality and so on. Okay. Uh, important point is that there is a clear vision of the uh, structural changes. In fact, this is the beam plot in 2008, and this is the financial crisis. When there is a financial crisis, there is a structural change of the beam plot, and the structure is, it, it is typically broken. Okay. Um, in considering this type of approach for real life data, we can tell about the Microsoft stock for 11 days. And we have a lot of information, a lot of data, and a lot of information by excluding a few of your clients. This is the classical symbolic data, the box plot of the data, and this is the um, beam plot data. The thing is, it's interesting because we here want to consider the impact of uh, this, the information of the markets, and then here we observe practically only the level of, and some, some type of variability. And here we, could, we observe that the structure of data is more complex. In fact, we can have a different level of equilibria that is representing some relevant information, for example, in trading. And the important uh, little annotation is that sometimes these uh, um, little parts are seasonal. So we can find the similarities between these different structures by considering the seasonality of the high frequency. In any case, uh, I consider the problem of utilization by considering simulation study design with the aim of comparing this type of data by using different tools, and uh, I consider
there are different types of models and different types of time series, from gauge to average processor, but characterized by the most simple to most complex different equations structure. Well, I have 10 different replications of each model, and each model contains characteristics of the financial time series, volatility class, structural changes, and so on. Where each observation is overwhelming. So we have uh, one million uh, observation or less by every single ob ob observation by considering each different beam of temporal ob ob observation. Okay, here, just a movie. I hope you go. Yeah. Exactly. This is the classical time series, and this is the street chart of the interval time series. This is the fast plot time series, and this is the beam plot time series. When there is an increase of the number of the beam of the observation, you can see the interval does not change at all or change less. The box plot tends to smooth information. The beam plot tends to uh, give some relevant information about the changing structure of our initial data. And most importantly, define what are the different levels of equilibrium we can find in our, in our data. This is the idea. Uh, the idea is that the beam plot is a flexible tool to represent our data. Um, in particular, clearly, uh, the, the most important point uh, are the initial information of the time series that would be kept by considering the, uh, the uh, structure of the, of the beam plot. Okay, uh, I have to stop because uh, I have a very stupid thing to do. Okay, this, this is just uh, the results which we compare uh, by simulation, the scalp time series, the street chart, the box plot time series, the beam plot time series, the box percentile time series, and the violent plot time series. These are different symbolic data that will be used, and uh, we can observe the information that we can keep from the beam plot time series is higher than the other case. Okay, this is the final computational experiment results, in which we consider that uh, the street charts are not uh, Specifying the general feature of the original time series, where no information about outlier and intra level viability. The box plot uh, and uh, other type of similar symbolic data tend to capture the general feature of our data and the all the trend cycles behind this one, but not the intra level viability. Uh, the intra level viability could be very important when there are a lot of data and it's necessary to make some trading. From data. Um, so the idea is that we need to tend to keep the information we need from the original time series. In fact, by comparing, for example, the beam plot with the box plot, we obtain, uh, by increasing the number of observations, the initial structure of the time series where the box plot tends to smooth our initial data. I have the complex in the line series are higher information is related by the beam plot time series. Okay, this is uh, the optimal superior amplitude that is necessary to take into account what is the structure of the cycle, so it is necessary to consider the optimal uh, cycle by making a spectral analysis before, so it is the, the best uh, um, period for the beam plot. Okay, now the modeling process. Okay, here, so this is simply the descriptor description of the initial beam plot because we want to describe the structure of the beam plot in two ways, the x axis and y psi. Those are descriptor points, so we consider the simple coordinates of the beam plots uh, that we can have over time. Clearly, it's very important for comparing the structure of our beam plot over, life, over time. In any case, the idea is to model the beam plot. The beam plot could be, uh, or a single user observation, can be characterized by a fair field meter of density function. So this is the idea to uh, measure the parameters of the beam plot by considering them as a meter of density function. 
and then we want to estimate these parameters and in particular the missing weights of the input, uh, of the fleet text integer. So at the end we obtain the parameters that is representing the relevant information we will know uh, from the process. This is an example of parameterization in which we consider, sorry I, I, I'm not sure it's possible to see, I, I think not, I'm sorry. In any case, uh, I, uh, I use it here an example to consider a, a, a series that with a clear structural change due, for example, to seasonality, the input does not uh, specifically uh, measure this type of structural change and the parameterization of the fifth mixture trying to show this, this thing that could be very relevant for training uh, operations. In fact, we, we find two different uh, um, components. So, we start from the parameters and we define each vector of parameter as a combination of time factors. So, we, we need to find some type of synthesis by considering factorial time series methods to obtain uh, a single temporal measure that is represented the dynamics of the windows over time. For measuring the factors, we use a method of node literature in which, uh, for example, the time series factor analysis. We, we, want to, we want to obtain uh, the factors for this uh, the relevant information from the big plot. By forecasting the big plot models, now we consider the initial factors. So we predict the initial factor by starting from a simple ARM model, and then we consider different methods for, for, for a combination. So we consider different forecasts, and we combine the different forecasts to make problem of uncertainty of uh, our, our information, of our model. Okay. So we start the model and then we, uh, we make a diagnostic of the model because uh, we have two types of diagnostic. First diagnostic related to internal model, so the, the things mixture related to, for example, the dispersed statistics and ANOVA, to, 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 to know if our initial model is appropriate for the data and then the external model in diagnostic related to the forecasting of our, of our model. This is an example uh, by using real data. In particular, I, I use data from Dow Jones, and we use the model uh, for the period of 91 to 2010 by forecasting to 2010. And I use uh, six uh, models in uh, forecasting right here and uh, th this type of forecasting combination strategy. So, um, this is the result, sorry, are not particularly visible, sorry. Uh, in any way, the time factor identifies temporal shocks as a seismogram. This is time factors, and this is representing all shocks uh, that could be uh, in the economy. I have checked, and uh, all of these shocks are related to a financial crisis uh, all around the world. So, this is uh, Significant method would be sensitive to understanding what is happening, something strange on the financial system. This is the people that we see for the GI for the Dow Jones. This is the model parameters of uh, we, that we, which we obtain. This is the forecast accuracy. We start from a model, a single model, an algorithm of Algorima, and then we select the best model by model selection and the specific um, improvement of the prediction related to the uh, different uh, combination. Okay, now the second approach of forecasting is linked to considering the different, uh, um, the different descriptors and then at, at the same time we consider an external model identification an estimation and a forecast combination. But there is a new, a new point, a very important point to consider. So, we start to have for each model and each attribute uh, a forecast, and then we use a different schemes of combination in forecasting. Okay. The important point uh, is that uh, here, for the Y that's representing the uh, Y of our model or our um, instability of the windows over time, we need a, a search algorithm. A search algorithm is an algorithm that uh, finds the best subset observation in the forecasting model. This is an improvement, as we know, uh, in an improvement of the model. 
This is the uh, assessment of forecast accuracy, in which we consider different methods for making into account what is the best uh, model we can use. And so this is the example where we start from the input time series, we obtain the actual time series for the XC, which represented the location or the trend over time in the long run dynamics of the original input dynamics. You can see it's very similar and it captures the uh, feature of the original time series. Then, at the same time, the XC is representing the variability over the time uh, or the instability. This is a prediction to forecast into big content series in which we consider that combination of forecasts are very good because uh, are made uh, under 5 and under 2 and at the same time the uh, model search minimizes the uh, error by considering uh, the uh, Y attributes. This is a clustering approach, uh, to approach is the first approach we consider a generalization of Romano Giordano Lauro distance in which we are working on models, the models we have uh, seen uh, before. Um, mm. In particular, we have two pieces of information to be combined, in particular the two pieces of information are the fitting indexes uh, and the model parameters. The model parameters estimate the fitting indexes are obtained by considering the, our uh, initial internal model. We combine this information at our distance and then we consider this distance, distance for a, the entire series. At the end, we obtain a, 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 good, uh, a good example, a, this, this example, in which we want to consider uh, a, a typical problem of asset allocation, in which we have different uh, stocks of different, pri different price, maybe different stocks, and the observations are, are related to this period. Starting data are collected daily and a single, a single pin plot is built by year. At the same time, we want to uh, build the, uh, the portfolio or, or having an idea of the structure of our data set. This is the results uh, by considering the pin plot time series uh, and then the parameterization and the clustering. And uh, we can see that here we have all companies from financial and technology. Experts can interpret this type of class, and I would say that the financial crisis make an eat a specific shock on financials and the company strongly related with financials. So, for example, technological companies, where there are some companies, for example, Amazon or Apple, that are not specifically linked with this type of financial crisis because they have a new business and a new growing business. So I told them grow to companies. And so it is uh, uh, an interesting point. A different approach is using the original attributes and considering factors by all the different uh, attributes and series and then uh, using a, a, a correlation distance between the different factors. Uh, in this case, I consider a different example by considering different world markets, one for each country, and the observation related to 2003 to 2010, and the starting data uh, collected daily. At the same time, we obtained the, the uh, description for the pin plot by considering uh, six uh, um, attributes, and we consider uh, now the factor time series. This is the first factor for all the world markets that is representing the long run growth, the location at the site of the pin plot time series. And in particular, each trajectory is representing the international stock market. This uh, here, it is representing the, the financial crisis. Okay, the short run dynamics representing the factor two is interesting uh, uh, at the same time because it is uh, considering the uh, behavior of uh, instability of the financial system, the world of the financial system. At the same time, we can see here the financial crisis and here another crisis. Okay, so I consider the, the classic example here and finish. Okay. Uh, we can to, to see that there are some type of contagion mechanism in, in the long run. Some markets can be identified as senior markets. <coughs> so, for example, the 
United States markets, but the Japan markets, can to show what are the um, signals of the crisis for other different companies. All the, all, diciamo, all the um, countries represented here are different contagion channels. So we, we, find, we find here different areas of monetary areas, for example the uh, euro area, that is representing the mechanism of uh, contagion over, over time. This is a second uh, factor and it is a more clear effect because the second factor is representing the instability. For example, here the Asian Latin American market and this uh, euro area. Okay, now uh, I have developed a page in R to make it all, uh, all this type of analysis and type of framework. This is the scheme of the package with built-up data and forecasting and clustering. And in particular, I uh, will implement at the same time um, a graphical user interface to make it, it, this type of analysis very simple to, to, be, to be applied. Okay. Uh, about conclusion, uh, built-up seems to be an interaction tool in the reference data and in general a complex time series. The main advantage of built-up time series are the representation as model, the deletion of the random error, the estimation of the missing values, and the characterization of the typical pattern in a limited number of parameters. This is a summary of initial, uh, initial ideas. Uh, possible uh, future developments would be B-plot time series in a spatial context, using B-plot time uh, series using different measures, different distances, and uh, more important, the B-plot time series analysis to the multivariate case. And clearly, uh, using this type of tool uh, for real financial applications as trading or uh, ta tactical asset allocation uh, and so on. Thank you very much for your attention.